I want us to go straight to the Word of God this morning, if that's okay with us. So kindly just rise up on your feet as you read the Word of God, and then we get into the business of the day. Amen. Um, please turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms chapter 40. Psalms chapter 40. If you're there, say amen. amen. Psalms chapter 40. Amen. And uh, put your finger there and just flip again to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, being our theme verse for this year, I want us to read together Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31 and also Psalms chapter 40 from verse 1 to verse number 5. So Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, Bible says, but those who wait for the Lord who expect, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. I'm like Pastor Jimmy, so I enjoy the Amplified Version. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, hope in Him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. Mount up to the sun, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalms chapter 40 and verse number 1, the Bible says, I waited patiently and expectedly for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult, of destruction, out of the miry clay, froth and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, steady my steps, and establishing my goings. Verse number three says, And he has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear, they will revere and worship and put their trust and confident reliance in the Lord. Verse number five, he says, Many, O Lord my God, are the wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts towards us. No one can compare with you. If I would declare and speak of them, they are too numerous. Praise the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much this morning, even for the privilege of being able to hear your word. The Bible says that your word is a double-edged sword. Your word is a light and a lamp unto our feet. Lord, the Bible says the entrance of your word brings light and the darkness is unable to comprehend. Lord, I pray that as we share your word this morning, you shall bring light and revelation and illumination in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I stand as a vessel, Lord, to be used for your honor and for your glory. Father, we give you praise and we give you honor because we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. amen. Shout amen. Just turn to your neighbor before you sit and tell them, I don't mind waiting. Uh, turn to the other one behind you and say, I don't mind waiting. No, the one on your left, say, I don't mind waiting. And one more time, I don't mind waiting. Amen. You can take your seat in God's presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to say first a big, big, big thank you. Um, of course, to our dear, dear pastor, our resident pastor, for giving us this opportunity to share God's word. God bless you so much, ma'am, and God bless you so much, man of God. Uh, pastor Dan also, thank you. Thank you for taking care of the servant of God. Amen. And of course, our dear father, our bishop, our geo, in his absence, want to appreciate and salute the servant of God, the man of God, even for being faithful and allowing us to be here today. Amen. Let's appreciate the servant of God, whatever he is, just appreciate God for his life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, in the next few minutes, um, maybe 
30 or, or so minutes or 40 minutes or so, I want to just share with us briefly on this thing I've entitled, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Uh, there's a song that I had by a singer called um, uh, Bynum. Bynum. And he sang a song that says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. She was going through a very difficult time in her life. And one day when she was just waiting on the Lord, she had this impression in her heart, a song that just dropped in her spirit. And that song says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting for the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting for the Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting for the Lord. Very easy, simple. I don't mind wait. can you help me sing it? I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting for the Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting for the Lord. Just close your eyes and just lift your voice and just sing this together. It's a simple song. And in this season of waiting on the Lord, amen, 2022, Bible says, those that wait on God, those that wait on God shall renew their strength if this year there's a song that we need to trust God to sing and that it may enter into our spirit, is Lord, I don't mind waiting. That is a dangerous statement to the devil. The devil hates that. Say, Lord, I don't mind waiting. It may take a while, but it's, it's fine. I'll wait. I'll wait. It's okay. I am 30. I'm 40 years it's okay. I don't mind waiting. It's fine. It's okay. It's fine. I, I know because I know if God is in charge, then everything shall fall in place. I, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I'm still walking. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I'm childless and I'm 50. I don't mind waiting. I will still wait. I will still wait because God is in charge and God is in control. And I discovered the benefits of waiting. Yeah. Hallelujah. Something happens when you wait on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I'm sick in my body. I prayed for healing. Nothing is happening. Lord, I don't mind waiting. Because your timing is the best. The Bible says in the fullness of time, God released his son Jesus Christ. In the fullness of time, Galatians 4, 4, I believe. In the fullness of time, Ecclesiastes 3, 11 says that in its time, all things are made beautiful in its time. Lord, I, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting for the Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting for the Lord. One more last time, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Yes, Lord, for the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. For the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's put hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember a couple of years ago, many years ago actually, um, I, when I was dating my 
my girlfriend, now my wife, many years ago. Uh, you know, I used to go to her office. She used to work in town, city center, and I used to work in South B. And so I would go to town, and then I would, uh, she would, she, her office was in, uh, I think, fifth or sixth floor. But I would get to her office, and I would just be downstairs and just wait for her, you know. Uh, I mean, sometimes she would take five minutes or ten minutes, but I would just be there waiting for her to finish what she was doing, and then she comes, and then we go home. Uh, sometimes it would even take more than half an hour, even one hour, but I, I didn't mind waiting. <laughs> I would just be there and just wait and wait for her. Praise the Lord. In fact, uh, I was so common, uh, the guards knew me. <laughs> and even the tea girls knew me. You know, when they would see me coming, say, ah, chief, there's a cup of tea here. Grab a cup of tea as you. <laughs> I, I didn't mind waiting. I had no problem waiting. It was fine. So I waited, I waited. And, uh, and even later on, when God blessed us with a vehicle, and so I would be there, Wondering where would I park? They would say, Ah, Chief, you've come. We will squeeze you in some parking somewhere and you can wait there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But of late, I don't know what has happened because uh, we agreed to be somewhere, but when she delays by five minutes, I'm wondering, What's the problem? Please, what's the problem, man? You know, we need to. Even if there's nothing urgent, huh, I still would feel, no, 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 we, we agreed. We need to live at this time, so let's just move, you know. You know, I don't know about you. Have you been to a place where but you're waiting for somebody and it looks like they're taking so long? Yeah, or, or you're waiting for something to happen and it's taking so long. Probably you've been to uh, a, an examination room, you've gone for a checkup, medical checkup, and and they tell you, just, let's just wait for the results that are coming. And you feel like they're taking too long. Or you've just done a presentation. You've gone somewhere, you've pitched, and you've done a presentation. And, and, and they tell you, just wait there for the results or for the response. If you're going to go with you as a provider or not, you're just there and, and, and you're waiting. And you're thinking, these guys are taking too long to give me a response. You know, have you been there? You, you're wondering, why is it taking so long? Uh, I'm waiting for, uh, for, for this answer. It is taking too long to come forth. What is the problem? And yet it's just within a couple of minutes or a couple of hours. And you're wondering, why is it taking so long? I realize it's because today we have no patience. We are living in a microwave generation. We want everything in an instant. Everything fast. Yesterday I bought some medicine for somebody. It's called Maramoja. Maramoja. You know, if you have a headache, you take it. Maramoja, it disappears. Today we want instant things, instant loans. Yeah? I just apply and instantly, by the time I click that button, send, they have sent the money. Instant loans. We want instant things today. We are not patient at all. Instant solutions the other day I was so surprised. My son went to the shelf. He picked up some, I think some noodles or some indomie. And he, he, he put hot water. And he began to eat. I said, chief, these things are raw. He said, no. These things, no, no they're ready. It's instant. You just put hot water. You stir, put some salt, ready to eat. Instant food. Instant loans. In, life is just instant, instant, instant. You know when I tell young people that me, I proposed to my wife and we dated for three years. He said, doing what for three years? Three years? Today is like we have a checklist. You look at somebody, it will tick that checklist. If tick, 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 okay. We can now relate. We can now get married. Instant, instant, we want instant. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, this is the attitude we have when you come to God. We want instant things from God. Instant miracles from God. Instant blessings from God. And yet we forget that the God that we serve is a God of process. Hallelujah. 
He is a God of process. I believe in instant miracles, by the way. What I call miracles is when God has squeezed a process and he does it instantly. That's a miracle for me. That is a miracle. When Jesus went to the wedding at Cana in Galilee, the Bible says the wine, the wine went, ran out. And so they wondered, now what do we do? And so Mary, the mother of Jesus, told the disciples, told these dear ones who are there, whatever this man tells you to do, go ahead and do it. Now wine ran out. For those who understand wine business, good wine takes a long time to be ready. Many years to be ready. A couple of years, in fact. I think four or five years to be ready. That's what they say. The older the wine, the sweeter it is. Eh? So it takes a long time for it to be ready. But in an instant, Jesus compressed that four hours into four minutes. He said, pour water into that jar. Immediately, the water entered the jar. It became sweet wine. That's a miracle. The process was compressed. But God is a God of process. God is a God of process. Somebody say, God is a God of process. God is a God of process. And unfortunately, many times we want to put limitations and put timelines and put ultimatums on God. And yet God is a God of process. Everything that is around you, even yourself, you are here because of a fulfillment of a certain process. Everything, look around. Anything that you see now has gone through a certain process to be where it is. Everything. What is it? Chair. The building. The microphone. Myself. The water. The bottles. What? Flowers. Everything has gone through a certain process to be where it is. And yet we want everything in an instant. In an instant. In an instant. The God that we serve is a God of process. Bible says in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, but Jesus grew. Growing is a process. If God grew, if Jesus had to go to the process of growing, ladies and gentlemen, we have to appreciate the process. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 8, although Jesus Christ was a son of God, yet he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Jesus, God, learned. Learning is a process. God is a God of process. And I feel when I was preparing, I felt that many times we miss out on what God wants to do for us, to do in us, and to do with us because we circumvent, we dodge the process. We don't want to go through the process. We don't want to go through the procedure. We are trusting God for miracles every single time. But they that wait on the Lord, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. There's a process that is called waiting. Some will say waiting. Say waiting process. There's something called a waiting process that we, may, we must all be subjected to if we are to rise, if we are to mount up, if we are to walk, if we are to not faint, then there is a waiting process that we must be able to go through. Because child of God, I believe this is one of the things that God uses for us to grow. Waiting for us to mature. Waiting for us to handle and to become men and women of authority. Something called the waiting process. You know the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 1. Paul says, and he says that I say that he has, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, 
but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. As long as a child, uh, here is a child, he is not different from a servant. The child must grow. Even if the child is supposed to be the possessor, the inheritor of the throne of his father who is probably a king or supposed to inherit the property, maybe your son or your daughter is supposed to inherit the property. As long as that child is a child, she is unable to inherit what you have for them. Until they get to a certain level where they are grown, they have matured, then and only then can they appreciate the blessing that you have for them. And one of the key equipment and the tool that I discovered that helps me to grow and to mature, that I may be able to walk under the authority of God, is this process called waiting. The waiting process. You know, my kids always, always ask me, Dad, please, can you allow us to drive your car? Please. Two of them, 13 and 15. They always insist, please, allow us, please, allow us. He said, well, this car is basically yours, yes. And I love you too much to allow you to drive it. It's a blessing. Why? They are still underage. It is theirs, but they are underage. It is mine, but I'm underage. So I need to grow. Praise the Lord. I need to grow. Child of God, there are certain things, there are certain levels, there are certain dimensions in God we will never enjoy until we grow. Until we mature. Then we'll understand and walk in some levels and some dimensions. Somebody said something and he said that the, all of us have a version of us. There's a version of you that once it appears, and then that version is a version of authority. There's something that is an inside of me that needs to come out. There's a, another Joseph inside me, not this one, another one, that needs to come out. That Joseph is the Joseph of authority. Or Joseph that actually depicts the kingdom of God. But that Joseph must be able to come out. Can only come out through the process of waiting. So I tell my kids, don't worry. Once you have grown, because even right now, it is even legal in the laws of the land. I can't even give you. It's illegal. But once you have grown, once you've reached that mature age, I will give you your own blessing. It is yours, your blessing. And the tool that they have to employ is a tool of waiting. I will wait. I will wait. So what is waiting? Praise the Lord. This thing called, what is waiting? Oh, those that wait. Those that wait on God will not be put to shame. Those that wait on God will mount up. So what is waiting? So when I checked in the dictionary and in some Bible that I have, it says the word waiting is a Hebrew word that is pronounced as kava. Q-U-Q-A-V-A-H. Kava. Q-A-V-A-H. Kava. That's, that's that how you pronounce it. Huh? Kava. Thank you, Pasi. Kava. Kava. And that what kava means, bind together by twisting. Oh, that, that word kava means binding or bound together by twisting. The other one says, is actively, actively anticipating with expectation, hopeful, watching for God to act. Waiting. Actively anticipating with expectation, hopeful, watching for God to act. Waiting. The state of expectation anticipation, hope, and trust in God that is going to do something. It's a state of expectation. 
hope, trust in God, that God is going to do something. I wonder if there's anybody here who is in that state of expectation. I wonder, praise the Lord. One, two, three people, four, praise the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall not be disappointed. May I say to you in 2022, when you stand in expectation before the Lord, when you wait on God, when you are hopeful to God, and when you're anticipating God, when you're actively anticipating for God, may your expectation not be disappointed in Jesus' name. I mean, by the close of this year, you will have a testimony. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 40, where we read that God has given me a new song. May God give you a new song before the close of this year. Why? Because you are waiting on God. Your expectation is of God. Praise the name of Jesus. You know the Bible tells me in Acts chapter 3 and verse number 5, Peter and John are going to pray in the hour of prayer. And the Bible says as they go to the temple of God to pray, they see a man, a man who is lame at the gate called Beautiful. And the Bible says that when they went closer to this man, they so this man was begging. He was asking for arms. When he came close to this man, the Bible says he saw the expectation of this man. The man was expectant. He was expecting to get something from Peter and John. And the Bible says when he saw them, when he saw him, when Peter and John saw him, he said, silver and gold I don't have. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. His expectation became a platform for his miracle. May your expectation become a platform for your lifting. In Jesus' mighty name. Child of God, this man called, I think it's called beautiful. Bible says that he leaped, he began to walk, and he entered into the temple. A place he had never entered before. Bible says he would just be dropped at the entrance of the temple. And they would go. But that day, he leaped. He jumped and he entered into the temple. Ladies and gentlemen, there are places you've never stepped before. You've only been at the gate. But I pray for you in 2022, by reason of your expectation in God, you will not only be dropped at the entrance, but you shall enter inside. You shall jump and you shall leap in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know this man, Bible says he jumped and he leaped. He jumped and he leaped. Let me declare this in this place today. You shall jump and you shall leap. You will jump and you shall leap. Praise God. In other words, you shall take bigger steps. Uh, you will take bigger steps. You think that you are late. You will jump and you shall leap. Praise the Lord. Those that went before you, they will be surprised because they will see ahead of you. Why? Because you will jump and you shall leap. Why? By reason of your anticipation and expectation in God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Expectation. Waiting on God. Hopefully, He will do something. He will do something. He will do something. And let me not try to define right now too much, but I think expectation is different from faith. Uh -huh. It's different from faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Expectation. What are you expecting? Maybe it's not what God has told you. But there is a desire in your heart. It is a desire. You know, for me, I believe faith is my practical expression of my confidence in what God has said. That is faith for me. My practical expression, what I do with what God has said, practically, that is faith for me. But expectation is, what's my desire? What's your desire? What's your desire? Expectation. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Turn to your neighbor, the neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. 
David, David, in where we read Psalms chapter 40, in verse number 1, got to this place. And that's why he says, I patiently waited for the Lord. He understood that for me to walk in authority, for me to experience the fullness of the blessing of God, I need to wait. David never gave God ultimatums or timelines or cutoffs. No, no, no. He said, I patiently waited for the Lord. Tell neighbor, neighbor, stop giving God ultimatums. Just wait. Tell him, I know it's not easy, but just wait. I know it's not comfortable, but wait. Don't backslide. Wait. Don't go back to Egypt. Wait. Don't drop your faith. Wait. Hallelujah. Why must I wait? Why should I wait? And I want to give you three things. There are many more in this scripture, but three things that hit me that made me say I need to wait. And the same, same things is what made David wait. And David got responses and got answers from these things. Three things that David benefited from waiting on the Lord. Three things I said, Lord, I don't mind waiting because if I wait, these things will be my portion. What are these things? Number one, Bible says, I waited patiently and he inclined unto me. Hallelujah. And he heard my cry. Praise the Lord. The word incline means to bend down towards. The word incline means to gravitate towards. The word incline means to, to move towards a certain direction. To be attracted to a certain decision or a person or thing. When I waited on the Lord, he inclined to me. Let me call my FC here. FC, uh, Victor. Victor is our finance director in Bad Lux. Just come, sir. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate this man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. FC is me praying to God. I, please, just know, I'm just an example. I am God now. <laughs> and FC is me. Don't worry about the height. And the, please, just an example. He's, he's, he's myself, and I am the Lord. The Bible says that when I patiently waited on the Lord, what happened? The Lord inclined himself. In other words, God inclined himself. In other words, God, the omnipotent God, you know, he took a posture. He began to concentrate on me. When you wait on God, God inclines himself to you. And he begins to hear your cry. God is gravitated towards your cry. He gets closer to you. The gap between the two of you is removed because God is now coming closer to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what happens. Thank you, sir. That's what happens when, when David prayed. He said, oh God, when I, I, I waited patiently upon you, thank you. Because God, you inclined yourself to me. Please picture this. The God of all creation, the omnipotent God, the omniscient God, when you wait on him, when you are expecting from him, when you're anticipating that he would move, he inclines and when he inclines to you, it means he's taking attention. He wants to hear what you're saying. And not only the Bible says he inclines and he heard my cry. 
child of God, waiting on God is a good thing because it is waiting patiently on God that causes God to incline himself to you. Not to everybody. Hallelujah. David took the initiative. He says, I waited. I waited and God inclined. He took the first step. He said, I will wait on God. And he did not incline to everybody, but inclined to me. To me. What a personal God. What an individual God. He is concerned about you. Child of God, do you want God to hear your cry? Do you want God to be inclined to you? Wait patiently upon the Lord. Why must I wait? Because he inclined himself to me. And he heard my cry. This year, God will hear your cry. Why? Because we are waiting on him. This year, he will hear us. He will be inclined unto us because you are waiting on him. Not only that, the Bible says, he inclined unto me. He heard my cry and he, brings, he brought me out from a horrible pit. Verse number two, he says, he drew me out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and destruction, out of the mary clay, froth, and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. When you wait on God patiently, God will get you out of the mary clay. I don't know what kind of clay you are in. I don't know what kind of pit you are in. I don't, I don't know what kind of uh, prison you are in. But the Bible says that when David waited upon the Lord, he removed him out of that bad place. Some of us have been in a very, very bad place. And what you need to do tonight, today is just to wait on God. You know, a, a horrible pit is a place you cannot get yourself out of. A pit. You can't get yourself out of it. It is beyond you. You have no way. It's like you have an enemy who is very strong. You cannot defeat him. A situation that is too big for you. It is too heavy for you. Bible says when you wait on God, God... God will bring you out. Why? Because he's inclined to you. He hears your cry. He will pull you out of that Mary clay. Every kind of pit you are in today, by reason of waiting upon the Lord, this year 2022, the Lord will stretch out his mighty hand and he will pull you out in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Why don't you clap your hands for Jesus? Because he will. Pull you out of your Mary clay. He will get you out of that quagmire. He will get you out of that slippery place. You try to get out, you can't. You try once, twice, you can't. But when you wait on God, He say, Lord, I'm expecting you to do something. Lord, I'm expecting you to do something. Lord, I'm intertwined with you. I'm intertwined with you. In other words, that your desire is my desire. When you're intertwined, you cannot even tell very clearly which is which. In other words, you are inter when you wait on God, you get intertwined. Your will becomes his will. His desire becomes your desire. His song becomes your song. You become a mouthpiece of God. How can God not deliver you? When your will is his will. When your desire is his desire. Because you are intertwined with him. You are constantly in his will. He will deliver you. He will save you. For his glory. Hallelujah. He will pick you out and pull you out of the slippery floor. The pit. The prison. That bondage. If we wait on him. Not only that, Bible says... Not only that he will pull you out of the mary clay, but also set your feet on a rock. In other words, that when you wait on the Lord, you become like Mount Zion. Hallelujah. When the storms come, child of God, when the storms come, the winds will blow. 
it is fine. They will blow. You may sway to your left or to your right. Or when the storms are over, you get back to your position. Because you are standing on the solid rock. You are built on Jesus Christ. Why? Because when you wait on God, God places you in a rock to stand. You cannot be swayed. You know, we are swayed many times because we are not standing on the rock. We're not waiting on God. If you wait on God, child of God, challenges will come. As the psalmist say, that many will be the afflictions, and many are the afflictions of the godly. But the Lord shall deliver him from all of them. When challenges come, yes, they will come. And as long as you're born again, as long as you're saved, challenges will come. The Bible says many are the afflictions. Not maybe, uh uh-uh. The afflictions of the righteous. Who is righteous here this morning? Expect challenges. So don't say, oh, I don't know why I'm being challenged. Uh Uh-uh. Are you a Christian? Expect challenges. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But, but God will deliver him from them all. He will deliver you. But if you're on a solid rock, by reason of waiting on him, they will come, they will find a standing. Praise the Lord. Not only that, Bible says he will establish your goings. He will establish your goings. When I saw that word establish, what came to my mind is permanency. 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 God will give you permanence. God will give you stability. Hallelujah. Not contracts. <laughs> Three months contract, six months contract. You know, God will give you permanency in what you do. You will become the Psalms 1 3 believer. That you are planted in the streams of water. That whatever you do prospers. Whatever you do, it prospers. Why? Because you are planted in the streams of water. Because God has given you what? Permanence. It is permanent. And no wonder you will become a blessing this year in a big way. Why? Because you are permanent. You know, you are settled. When no, when somebody is permanent, there's a level of settlement and stability and order. God is giving you order this year. Why? Because you're waiting upon Him. So there is permanence, there is stability, there is order. You shall become a blessing in your family. You shall become a blessing in your workplace, in your business, in the church, in your ministry. Why? Because you're given stability and permanence by reason of waiting on God. Waiting on God grants you stability. You're not tossed here and there. Stability. Psalms 22, verse 14. It says, They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. May that be your portion this year. You will bring fruit at all time. When you are young, when you are old, you shall still be fat. Well, I don't know if it is physically, but whichever way, you shall still be productive. You shall still be prolific. You will still be, you know, profitable. Irrespective of your age, you shall still be strong. As Bishop was telling us, Abraham was still strong. Why? He waited on God and God renewed him. Even at 100 years, he was still strong. He was still stable. He would still do what young men were able to do at an age of 100 plus. Why? Waiting on God grants you profitability. You are strong at all times. Strong anywhere you go. Strong and a blessing everywhere you go. He will give you a new song. A song of praise. Hallelujah. A new song. Today, may God give you a new... When you leave this place, God give you a new song. There's a song that you've been singing. God will give you a new song. A song of praise. And many will see and rejoice. May God give you a new song. By reason of what he has done in your life. Praise the name of Jesus.
Let's rise up on our feet in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We wait on God. We wait on the Lord. We wait on the Lord. Because God inclines His ear to us. He hears our cry. When He hears our cry, He answers our prayer. God places us on a solid rock. He picks us out of the miry clay, out of the pit, out of a situation that we cannot be able to get ourselves out of. He causes us to be put on a stability, on a stable ground, on a place that cannot be shaken when we wait upon the Lord, when we're expectantly waiting on God. The Bible says, actively waiting on God. So what must I do? Let us remain actively waiting on God. What are you doing right now? Are you serving? Are you an usher? Are you in the worship team? Are you preaching keep on actively waiting on God right there right there right do what you are doing in the house of God he says actively waiting on God he will pick us up where no man is able to pick you up from he will set you let me tell you God can set you up I'm telling you hallelujah I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but one of our pastors gave a powerful testimony here in our prayer meeting. You know, powerful testimony. Beloved, let's wait on the Lord. I don't mind waiting because the Lord knows me. He knows what is in my heart. He knows time is running out. He knows what I need. So let me not rush him. No ultimatums. Lord, in your time, you make all things beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think you are late. You become the latest. Hallelujah. Yes. Latest. Yeah. yeah. God, God, God is allowing others to go before you so that the mistakes they make you learn before you get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. But wait on God. Wait on the Lord. Brothers and sisters, wait on the Lord. The man of God gave a powerful testimony. Lost his job. And for a couple of years, I think almost two years, he had no job. But if there is a man that I saw committed on this pulpit, constantly on the pulpit, actively waiting, actively doing what he has been called to do, not to give God ultimatum. Say, Lord, this is an opportunity to serve you now. As I serve you actively. As I'm involved in your service actively. Sort me out. I will be involved here. I'll just do what I have to do. What I know what to do. If it is singing, Lord, I will sing with every breath that I have. If it is preaching with everything that I have. If it is ushering with every thing I have, I will do it Lord and I know you will sort me out because I'm actively waiting on you. As I do this Lord, I know, I know something will happen, something will happen. Ladies and gentlemen, right now his life is on another dimension. I'm telling you, God has picked, it, has picked him up from the pit where no one could pick him out from. God has raised him up. God has lifted him up but he waited on the Lord. I will wait on God. Because He will pick me up. He will grant me stability. He will incline Himself to me and hear my cry. He will give me a new song. A song of praise and to my God. Just lift up your hands, lift up your voice this morning. If that is your cry, say, Lord, thank you so much for sharing your word with me. I desire to wait on you. I desire to wait on you. Teach me to wait on you, Heavenly Father. Teach me to wait on you, God, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I will wait on you. I will wait on you, Lord. Teach me to wait on you. Let me not circumvent. Let me not, uh, Lord, dodge the process of waiting. Waiting, oh God. I know it may not be easy. I know it's not easy. It is not comfortable. It is not very good. But I know at the end of the day, oh God, there are benefits. There's a blessing in waiting upon you, oh God. But my life will change. You'll give me a new song. Lord, you'll pick me out from the miry clay. You'll give me stability. You will hear my cry. You'll answer me, Father. And so I will 
will wait on you. I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait on you, God. And in the name of Jesus, my life will be different. You will grant me a new song, a new song of praise. A song of praise unto my God. Many will hear and want to serve you and want to love you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.